what happens to the pigment in the hair as it lightens? Does it physically come out of the strand? Does it dissolve and disappear? How can people on Instagram can take a person blonde in one appointment, but it just doesn't happen for me? Why do people pull warm? Why can hair color look great at first and then fade brassy over time? If you love science and educational content, then you are in for a treat. If you would rather watch something to entertain you, then you're gonna be super bored during this video and it might not be for you. So if you're ready for something a little heavier than usual, then let's get started. If you have never seen my face before, welcome. My name is Shannon. I'm a hairstylist and industry educator out of rural Midwest, Illinois. I entered the industry in 2008 and along with being licensed, I also hold an applied science degree in cosmetology. So let's see if I can use all of that to clear up a quite foggy subject. In order for us to understand how pigment lightens, we first have to discover what pigment actually is. Your hair color is decided by your genetic coding. Your genes send a message to your body and tell it what to produce and how much. There are three components that make up the physical color of hair. We have eumelanin, which is responsible for the brown black pigment in hair. Then we have pheomelanin, which is responsible for the red, orange, golden color in your hair. And we also have something that we don't always think of, and that's keratin. Now keratin is the protein that most people associate with hair, but we don't always associate it with giving us any color and we should. Keratin is the same thing that your nails are made out of and is usually a milky white color, but can sometimes appear darker and golden. This is really important when we're talking about lightening hair. Keratin is very resistant to oxidative attack, which is good because it's the majority of your hair's structural protein. However, it can give us a little bit of trouble when we're trying to reach those really pale blonde colors. Every human hair on earth contains keratin, eumelanin, and pheomelanin, unless you have a rare genetic condition like albinism. Even natural redheads have a small amount of eumelanin, and even the lightest natural blondes have eumelanin and pheomelanin in them. It's the combination and concentration that determines your unique hue and darkness. Okay, so now we understand pigment, we can check that off the list. The next thing we need to dive into is oxidation, and then I promise we'll get to the point. So what is oxidation? Well, oxidation is a chemical reaction that can have several different outcomes depending on the substance being oxidized. Sometimes the color of a substance will get darker, like if I were to leave an apple out on the counter. And other times, when something is oxidized, it will get lighter, like when we lighten hair or bleach clothes. In regards to hair color, oxidation is a process in which H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, which is basically oxygenated water, interacts with the natural melanin in your hair, transforming it from eumelanin or pheomelanin into oxymelanin, which is a colorless pigment granule. To answer the question I prefaced with in the beginning of the video, no, the pigment doesn't dissolve or disappear or physically come out of the strand. It's simply undergoing a chemical reaction with H2O2 in which it loses its color. Here's the catch. H2O2 will do diddly squat to your hair if it can't actually access the pigment that it's trying to lighten. The eumelanin and pheomelanin pigment is trapped inside of protective protein sacs called melanosomes. We need to rupture these sacs in order to release the pigment granules out to become susceptible to oxidative attack by the H2O2. We need NH3, ammonia, or something of the like, like monoethanolamine. Adequate levels of these alkali are found in decolorizers slash bleach slash lighteners and permanent hair color. Are you still with me? Okay, let's get to the point. Here's where the story all comes together. Your hair in its natural state contains eumelanin, pheomelanin, and keratin. Eumelanin is very susceptible to oxidative attack. So as soon as you put NH3 or something of the like and H2O2 onto the hair, the eumelanin is the first to go. Once that dark pigment is oxidized, you no longer have a balanced brown to work with you are suddenly only seeing the keratin and the pheomelanin remain. Since the pheomelanin is a darker color than the keratin, it will take over and your hair will appear mostly red. 
as more and more of the theomelanin oxidizes, more of that yellow keratin will shine through and you will have an orange stage. As we keep processing and keep lightening, more and more and more of that pheomelanin will become oxidized and eventually you will see only the keratin remain, which is a pale yellow color. And that is when you've reached your max. But I want white blonde. Where is that stage? Oh, that stage exists on the floor. Once you've lightened past the yellow stage to a pure white stage, that means that all of your structural protein has been compromised. And you are basically looking at a hollow cuticle loosely held together by weak peptide bonds and the remnants of a cortical cell membrane. That is why you hear a lot about toning. Toning is not meant to lighten or darken the hair at all. It's only meant to either enhance or correct the undertone. Once we lighten to a pale yellow, we can then tone with a violet toner, counteracting the yellow, neutralizing it, and giving us a white appearing hair color. As time goes on, the synthetic dyes that we added in from the toner will eventually fade off, once again revealing your final state of pale yellow, which is why your hair can look awesome at first, and then a few weeks later can turn brassy. Um, okay, so what's the deal with everybody on Instagram being able to take a level 2 to a level 12 in one appointment? Why doesn't that happen for me? I am actually so excited to answer this for you. I would love to fill you in on some of the restrictions that we as hairdressers have. Now that we know how hair lightens, let's take a look at the timeline. Lightener is most potent as soon as it's mixed. As long as the product stays moist, sorry, it will continue to work. As time goes on, the lightener will become less and less potent and eventually stop or dry out. Lightener usually maxes out around two or three hours. Here's the kicker. Most manufacturers recommend that you only leave the product on from 45 to 60 minutes. So contingent upon your unique concentration of melanin in the presence of any synthetic dyes, we may only be able to lighten you one or two shades before we have to rinse the product off. If we as professionals were to leave the product on any longer than what the manufacturer recommends and you were injured or hurt in any way, we would, for one, feel terrible, and for two, be liable for any accompanying medical costs and be at risk for losing our license to practice. I love my career way too much to be kicked out of it. So when you see these amazing transformations going on on social media, a few things might be happening in order to get from point A to point B. One possibility is that these people really do just have a really low concentration of natural melanin and don't have any synthetic dye buildup on their hair. Or they may have been at the salon for eight plus hours doing application after application after application and condensing it into a 60 second video. I personally don't feel comfortable putting that amount of stress on the hair in such a short amount of time, and I know most hairdressers feel that way. So if you are looking to make a big change, expect to spend a lot of time in the salon. Whether that all be in one very long day, or over the course of several months. In conclusion, it's not that you can't be blonde, it's just that you may not be able to get there as easily as you might think. Congratulations, you made it all the way to the end of the video. If you did, you are a true hair nerd. That is all the fun I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed and we'll chat later. Bye.